السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new show of our journey through the Quran in the holy month of Ramadan with you, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Nashash. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, now we are in the 14th of Ramadan, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us will reach the end of this month and accept all the days and nights that we prayed and fasted during the holy month of Ramadan. So today, inshallah ta'ala, I'll go through Surah Yusuf, Surah Ar-Rad, Surah Ibrahim. And uh, Surah Yusuf, part of it is in Juz 12 and the other part in Juz 13. So from Ayah 1 until Ayah 52, it is uh, from Juz uh, 12. And uh, then from 53 until 111 is in the Juzo 13. And if I'd like just to go through the numbers, so from 1 to 20, uh, it will talk about the vision that Yusuf alayhi salam saw until he arrived in Egypt. Then from 21 to 35, it is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and the wife of the king at that time when they put him in the prison. From 36 to 42, now Yusuf alayhi salam in the prison and uh, then there were another two prisoners with him and they saw a dream and he interpreted uh, that dream for them. From 43 to 57, it talks about the vision of the king <clears throat> and he wants the people to interpret it and Yusuf was the right person for that and he came out from the prison and he was free and proved that he's innocent. From 58 to 68 the first meeting between Yusuf السلام, and his brothers who came to Egypt uh, to buy or to exchange some uh, some food. 69 to 82, uh, when Yusuf alayhi salam kept his brother with him, yeah, Benjamin. And 83 to 93, uh, it talks about the third meeting between Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother. And in this part, he told him that he is Yusuf alayhi salam. And from 94 to 101, it is the last scene of the story when the father and the other brothers came from Palestine to Egypt and all of them prostrated uh, to him. And here we can see the interpretation of the vision of Yusuf at the beginning of the surah. So in the surah, there is three visions. The vision of Yusuf alayhi salam at the beginning of the surah. The interpretation of it was at the end of the surah. Then uh, the vision of these two inmates in, in the prison and Yusuf interpreted to them after he made da'wah to them. Then the third one, what the king uh, saw and he asked the people and when they asked Yusuf, he gave the interpretation straight away. So let's go through the Surah Yusuf with some informations about it, inshallah ta'ala. So Surah Yusuf uh, is a Makki Surah and uh, there is one of the hadith talking about the Surah, how it revealed that Sahaba Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim, they said to the uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, O oh, Prophet of Allah, can you tell us some, some stories. Oh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the surah. So it is the only surah from the beginning to nearly the end which has one story about one prophet. So you'll find in other, sto other surahs like yesterday we spoke about surah Hud, we talk about different 
uh, prophets the same in Arab, the same you'll find in later in Shara and uh, Anbiya. Other other surahs you'll find not only one uh, surah, I mean one story about one prophet, you'll find different stories. But Surah Yusuf, which is the 12th surah in the Holy Quran, is talking about one prophet. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he asked, do you know who's Al-Akram ibn Al-Akram Al-Akram, the most noble, the son of the most noble, the son of the most noble, the most son of the most noble, they said, who? He said, Yusuf. Because Yusuf is the son of Yaqub. Yaqub is a, a prophet. Yaqub is the son of Ishaq. Ishaq is a prophet. Ishaq is the son of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he's a prophet. He's the only person, we can say, he, his father, grandfather, great father, grandfather, is all them prophets, alayhim salatu wasalam. So this is a unique uh, to Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he's a prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proved that he's innocent in the Quran, and he suffered in his life. He suffered when he was a child, suffered when he was uh, a young man. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him <clears throat> more than what he expected. Actually, I can say he might never expected that he would be a king. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, giving a reward for sabr. And we'll see this at the end of the, the surah, inshallah. So the name of the surah is Surah Yusuf, and this is the name all uh, all the books of Tafsir. And as I said, the Sahaba, Ridwallahi Ta'ala Alim, asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he recited to them this surah, نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص. We are reciting to you the best stories. And this is why it is important to teach our uh, children the stories of the Prophets. There's a very beautiful book, very simple, uh, written by Abu Hassan al Nadawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, a great scholar from India. It's called Qas al Nabiyin. He uh, is explaining these stories with very short <coughs> uh, way, in a short way, and to the point. So I advise you to read it for, for the children. Obviously, you'll find Qas al Nabiyin. Uh, for Ibn Kathir rahmatullahi ta'ala and there's many uh, books about the stories of the prophets being written during the history of, of Islam there is a lot of lessons we can learn from these uh, these prophets now I'll mention now inshallah ta'ala <coughs> quickly some of the objectives of of this uh, of this surah firstly it talks about the Quran Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayat uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Quran and started with Alif Lam Ra. So it is one of four surahs started with Alif Lam Ra. Talks about the Nubu'a uh, of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this story about one of the prophets of Bani Israel and it was in Mecca and at that time in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he didn't see the Jews who were in, in Mecca and didn't have any interaction with them at all. So this was one of the ways to prove that Muhammad Sallallahu is a prophet and what's revealed to him is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It tells about Ru'ya, Ru'ya al-Vijin, when, when you dream. So there's dif difference between normal dream and a true dream or what we call it a Ru'ya. And uh, Ru'ya is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself, his prophethood started with the Ru'ya, Ru'ya al-Sadiqa, that he used to see the, to see the true uh, dream and in the next day it will be as he saw it, as it explained in Bukhari, كَأَنَّهَا فَلَقَ الصُّبْحِ As you can see clearly the day. So this how Nubuwat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started. It is good when you have a good ru'ya to talk about it. And for the interpretation, seek a person who has the knowledge. And not everyone has the knowledge. Even he is a scholar, it's not necessary that 
he knows the interpretation. Uh, also, the surah tells us that the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is beyond anything. Look at Yusuf. They throw him in the in the will, and later he became a king. And also the ruling is only belongs to Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. And uh, also it tells us about al-wahi, and he is the one who revealed this to Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Uh, and the people, they don't look at a lot of signs to prove that he's one that you can see it on daily in daily basis and uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking after his slaves and how he sa uh, saves them and protect them all all the time and also tells you that the da'wah in itself means that you have to expect that you will find problems obstacles danger sometimes but how you can deal with all of these things with tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's go to the surah inshallah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim alif lam ra tilka ayatul kitab al mubin alif lam ra these are the verses of the clear book Kitab Mubi, Subhanallah, clear book. You will not find a clear book like the Quran. Easy, you can understand it. What you need only to start reading it. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'qilun Verily we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an in order that you may understand. And this is why I can say I encourage everyone of you brothers and sisters to learn Arabic. Because when you, when you learn Arabic and start understanding the Qur'an, you can taste the beauty of the Qur'an. نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين. We relate unto you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, the best stories through our revelations unto you of this Quran. And before this, i.e., before the coming of divine revelation to you, you were among those who knew nothing. About it. So this is to one of the proofs that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a prophet. So he doesn't know about this. And if you ask Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before this surah, who is Yusuf? He will not answer because he only revealed what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed to him. So from ayah four starts the story. So remember the numbers of the ayahs. So in ayah four is the dream. إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين. Remember when Yusuf عليه السلام said to his father, Oh my father, verily I saw in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating themselves to me. The father understood this straight away the meaning of this. Because he has 11 brothers and Shamsul Qamar, the sun and the moon, the father and the mother. He understood stood it. So he doesn't want him to tell his brothers. So they will feel jealous. He he, the father, said, O oh, my son, relate not to your vision <coughs> to your brothers, lest they should arrange a plot against you. Verily, shaitan is to man an open enemy. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a promise to Yusuf. And remember this promise and every single, every single thing in this promise fulfilled. 
وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم Thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and other things and perfect his favor on you <coughs> and on of the offspring of Yaqub as he perfected it on your fathers, Ibrahim salam and Ishaq, uh, aforetime. Verily, your Lord is all-knowing, all-wise. So you can see here Yaqub, Ibrahim, Ishaq, all the names mentioned, and there is promise that Allah will choose you, teach you the interpretation, and also he will fulfill his name on you, that all the graces will be, as he did that to your for, uh, forefathers. And all of this promise being fulfilled. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us one of the reasons why this was revealed. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَقْوَتِهِ آيَاتٌ لِلسَّائِلِينَ Where in Yusuf and his brethren, there was ayat, proofs, evidence, verses, lessons, signs, revelations for those who ask. Then from ayah 8 uh, onward, there is uh, about uh, what the brothers uh, told their father that they were talking to each other and they said, okay, our father loves Yusuf and his brother because there is two from one mother and ten from the other mother. So Yusuf and Benjamin from one mother and the other ten from another one. And they said, the father, he loves those two more than us. And this is not the truth because they were young, very young. And their mother died. So obviously he will give them extra compassion because they, they're young and they lost their mother. This, this is how it, it worked. But they interpret it in different, in different way. Then what they do, so the shaitan here played with their minds and there was suggestion to kill him and uh, throw him somewhere. And someone, he said, no, put him in a well. Someone will come and take him. In this way, you'll be free, free of killing. And in the same way, someone will be in charge of him. And after that, you can make tawbah. Uh, then they spoke to the father, why you don't let uh, Yusuf comes with us. They said, he said, uh, maybe you go there and uh, the wolf will come and eat him. So it is as he gave them uh, how they will find a, a justification for what they will do. They said, don't worry, we'll take him, we'll take care of him. And they went there. <clears throat> and while he was going with them, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him about what is going to happen. فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا بِهِ وَأَجْمَعُوا أَنْ يَجْعَلُوهُ فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبْ وَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ لِتَنُوَبِّئَنَّهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِمْ هَذَا وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ Ayah 15. So when they took him away and all of them agreed to throw him down uh, to the bottom of the well, they did so uh, and we revealed to him, indeed you shall one, one day inform them this is their uh, affair when they know you not. And this happened at the end. So he told them that, can you remember what we did to Yusuf? Ah, they said, you are Yusuf. So ayah 15 implemented in the same surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about them, what they did. They came uh, crying. And one of the scholars, he said, in this word, Isha'an, there is two signs that they are liars. The first sign that they are liars, that if they are telling the truth, why they wait until Isha to come and tell? This is number one. Number two, why they chose to come Isha? Because at that time there is no electricity, so when they come to the house, it's dark, so the father cannot see the faces. 
the expressions on their faces. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him. And they made the story that the, we went uh, for racing, then the wolf came and he ate him. And they said, we know that you cannot believe uh, us. And they put some blood, they slaughtered a sheep and put the blood on his shirt. Why are they bringing the shirt? Uh, and he said to them, Bal So there is something and sabr in Jameel. And he continued this sabr until the end of the of the surah. <clears throat> then a caravan came and sent someone to bring water. So when they put the bucket, then Yusuf clinged to that. They pulled him. Oh, there is a young boy, beautiful boy as well. Uh, and the brothers were watching. So when they came, they said, oh, you know, this is our brother's runaway, but if you'd like to buy him. So uh, they took him. They, uh, they paid them some money. And they went to Egypt. When they arrived in Egypt, there was a market for slaves, which was uh, in the whole world at that time. So they sold him. And who bought him? The king. The man now, this is what he said to his wife. وَقَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَاهُ مِنْ مِصْرَ لِمْرَأَتِهِ أَكْرِمِي مَثْوَاهُ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعَنَا أَوْ نَتَّخِذَهُ وَلَدًا وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلِنُعَلِّمَهُ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ and he, the man from Egypt who bought him, he said to his wife, make his stay comfortable. Maybe he will, uh, will profit us or we shall adopt him as a son. Thus did we establish Yusuf in the land and we might teach him the interpretation of the events. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full power and control over his affairs. Uh, but most of the men, they don't know. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him uh, knowledge and uh, wisdom. Then started the story between the wife and Yusuf alayhi salam. So he grew up in, in the house of, the, of that king and he was so beautiful. So the wife of Al-Aziz tried to seduce him. And she spoke to him openly that let us be together. And he said, no, no, Allah, a'udhu billah. And this is an important lesson to all brothers and sisters. Look, here, this for the men, Yusuf didn't run after a, a girl like many people these days running after girls and chasing them on the internet and... Uh, on the websites and the platforms and all of these things. No, she is the one who approached him. But he said, Ma'ad Allah. So do the same. Say Ma'ad Allah. And for any sister that these boys who are trying just to run after you and what they are only after their lust, say to them the same, Ma'ad Allah. A'udhu Billah. No, we are not going to do this. She was determined to do that. And Yusuf, no, he doesn't want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him a burhan, a good sign, and this saved him from that. And uh, despite that, she closed all the doors. And he ran away. When, and when he ran away, then she pulled him from the back and torn his, his shirt. So when they arrived, the king, yeah, and you, suddenly was there and some people with him and now she, what she was doing so uh, the boy running and she's after him she said oh so what is the punishment for the one who tried to do something to your family to your wife and she put the options either to be in the prison or a severe punishment now yusuf alayhi salam didn't scare from that. He said clearly, 
she is the one who is trying to seduce me, not not me. Now, a person from those who are around the king, they try to just uh, find a solution. <clears throat> and he said, look, look at his shirt. If it is torn from the back, uh, from the front, this means that she was defending herself. And this means that she is truthful and he's a liar. If it is torn from the back, then uh, this means that he was running from her. And this means that he's telling the truth and she's a liar. So when they found that it was thrown from the back, they said, This is uh, from your plots. Indeed, your plots are massive. And the news started to go out the palace. And uh, some women in the city, they heard about this. And they said, Astaghfirullah, oh, how? How this will happen? Imra'atul Aziz, the wife of Aziz, tried to seduce her boy. He grew up there. He's like her son. So when she heard about this, she called him and prepared a meal for them and fruits needs to be cut by the knives. Then she asked him to come. So when they saw him, they were impressed of his beauty. And while they are looking at them, they cut their fingers, injured their fingers. And this is uh, amazing. This is only a, an angel. And she said to him, this is what you blamed me. Are you blaming me for falling in love with this, with this man? And uh, if he doesn't listen to me, he will go to the prison. And he will be humiliated. Yusuf alayhi salam at that time, <clears throat> he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجْنُ حَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَتُونَنِ إِلَيَّ The prison is better for me from what they are calling me for. But I might find myself in a position that I cannot, I cannot keep fighting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him and save him f uh, from their plots. And the solution was to put him in the prison. So he will be there, he's away from here. And uh, also the news will calm, calm down. Then when he was in the prison, there was two inmates and they were working for the king. One of them, he was the one who's uh, pouring the wine for the king and the other one was the, the chef and they saw a dream one of them he saw that uh, he's pouring uh, wine and the other one he saw himself that he uh, has bread on his head and the birds eating from it so Yusuf alayhi salam understood the interpretation of that one of them will be killed the other one will be saved but before he enter that for, for them, he made da'wah to them that uh, I came from a family we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and أَرْبَابُ مُتْفَرِقُونَ خَيْرٌ أَمِ اللَّهِ الْوَحْدُ الْقَهَارُ What do you think? Many gods better or one uh, ilah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then he explained to them, interpreted the dream to them and he said to the one he believed <coughs> that he will be freed uh, Remember me, uh, remember me uh, when you go to the king and tell them there is a person in the prison with no, uh, he's not guilty, he didn't do anything. But that man forget until the king saw, saw a dream. And <clears throat> the, uh, the dream of that king was that he saw at the, in his dream that there is seven cows, fat cows, eaten by seven thin cows. And uh, seven sombolat, which is uh, cones, the other one very, very dry. And when he woke up, he was frightened of this and asked the people around him who can interpret that. And they said, we, we don't 
we don't know. At that time, the one who was in the prison remembered, and he said, uh, let us go to Yusuf. They went to Yusuf in the prison, and, he to and they told him the, the dream. So Yusuf salam, straight away understood the interpretation, but he said uh, that I, I need to uh, explain every, everything <clears throat> about what happened before I come out from the, the prison. And they gave them, and he t told them the interpretation of that. So let me read the ayah of the vision. وقال الملك إني أرى سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع عجاف وسبع سنبلات خضر وأخرى يابسات يا أيها الملو أفتوني في رؤياي إن كنتم للرؤيا تعبرون And the king of Egypt said Verily I saw in a dream Seven fat cows Whom seven uh, lean ones were uh, devouring, eating them. And seven green ears of corn and seven others dry. O oh, notables, explain to me uh, my dream, if it be that you can interpret dreams. <clears throat> so Yusuf alayhi salam, they told him the dream and he told him the interpretation. قال تزرعون سبع سنين دأبا فما حصدتم فذروه في سنبله إلا قليلا مما تأكلون يوسف عليه السلام said for seven consecutive years you shall uh, sow as usual and that the harvest which you uh, reap you shall leave it in the ears all expect a little of it which you might eat and subhanAllah, they found the best way to keep the wheat uh, safe is to keep it in the ears. This, is, will, uh, this means that this wheat will not be affected by different uh, uh, things which might uh, weak, uh, make it rotten. ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك سبع شداد يأكلن ما قدمتم لهن إلا قليلا مما تحصنون Then will come after that seven hard years which will uh, devour what you have laid by in advance for them all except a little of that which you have uh, guarded so, uh, stored So seven years will be good then seven years will be uh, famine. ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون. Then thereafter will come uh, a year in which people will have abundant rain and in which they will press wine and oil. Now the king, he was happy with the interpretation and he found now this person needs to be with him advising him he said bring him bring him from the prison so when they went to him in the prison if he's a normal person you say okay yeah that, that's great i'll go he said no i will not leave here until the king bring his wife and all these women and say clearly that i am innocent ask them ask them what what I did, what is my crime? The king, he found this is a fair request. So he asked, so he brought the ladies, brought his wife. What's your problem when you try <coughs> to seduce him? The ladies, they said, So we didn't see anything wrong with him. At that minute, what the lady said, قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راوته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين 
Doifel Aziz, now the truth is manifest to all. It was I who sought to seduce him, and he is surely of the truthful. <clears throat> now the king, uh, he realized that he's innocent, and he'd like him to be one of his advisors. He said, bring him. I'd like him to be with me. And he said to him, so, verily this day, you are with us, high in rank and fully trusted. <clears throat> so, don't worry about the plots and anything. You are safe and you are in a high rank. So, Yusuf now, he'd like to link between the dream and the position that he's looking for. He'd like to thank the king. Because of his offer. He said, sit me over the storehouses of the land. I will indeed guard them with full knowledge. As a minister of finance in Egypt. And from this, the scholars, they said, there is no harm in asking if you know that you are qualified and you can do the job to ask for a job. There is no harm. Now, uh, oh, the, the king accepted because no, Yusuf now, his plan is how to save the country, how to save the people because he knows what's going on by the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here he put this beautiful ayah. وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفَ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَتَبَوَّعُ مِنْهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءً نُصِيبُ بِرَحْمَتِنَا مَنْ نَشَاءً وَلَا نُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Thus did we give full authority to Yusuf alayhi salam in the land to take position therein when or where he likes we bestow <clears throat> our mercy of, on whom we will and we make not to be lost of the reward of al muhsini then from this ayah 57 uh, sorry 58 the bro the brothers came and just to give put you in the atmosphere of this so <clears throat> the seven years which is good passed and they did uh, according to the advice of Yusuf. Then the seven years of famine started. And the only country, and it was everywhere, the only country which has wheat at that time is Egypt. So the people from around, they start to come to Egypt and Yusuf made a system that he made <coughs> uh, a measurement. And it's called Sa. It was from gold. And the people will come, bring their stuff, dates or any other things, and exchange. And for every person, he will give him one Sa. As I said, the famine was there, so the brothers of Yusuf now, they want to buy some wheat for their family. So when they came, Yusuf uh, recognized him, but they didn't recognize him at all because he grew up and they never imagined that Yusuf would be in that position. He started talking to them and they told him that we are the sons of a prophet and we have another brother. And So he said to them, okay, will you come next time bring your other brother, so you'll have extra, extra portion. And they said to him, okay, so we'll, we'll talk to his father. And hopefully he will accept. And because they are uh, his brothers, so he said to those who are working with them, don't take what they brought with them. Leave it to them. And give them the, uh, these portions. So this is what they did. And he said to them, if you don't bring the your brother, don't come. 
So when they went back, they said to their father, Muni amin al-kail. So look, are, we are not allowed to go again unless we bring our uh, brother with us. And the father, he said, how can I trust you with his brother when you uh, know what you, how you dealt with Yusuf? So when they opened what they have on their camels, they found their stuff is there and the wheat is there. So they said, look, we are not lying. This is a clear proof that we are telling the truth. He said to them, look, I will not send him with you until you bring me a covenant, you sign it, all of you, that you will keep him safe unless something overpowered you. So they wrote a letter, signed it, and he said to them, when you go, don't enter from one gate. Enter from different gates. And... Uh, Mufassirin, they said, he doesn't want them to be envied because they were elven now. So they went there. They went to Yusuf, this the second meeting. So when they came, he brought his brother. And now he wants to keep his brother with him. He told him that I am your brother, don't worry. So he made a small trick, I can say, that he asked the, the workers, to put that saw I mentioned in his stuff. So while they were leaving, one of the workers, he said, oh, that caravan, you are thieves. They came back. He said, how come you call us thieves? He said, this Suwa al-Malik, the major, uh, we cannot find it. And you were the, the last people who were, were here. So the suspicion is you, that you, you took it. They said, no, no, we are uh, not people who are spreading corruption and do, doing all of these things. They said, okay, can we search? They said, okay, search. But if we find it with one of you, he said, the rule is that if you find it with him, take him as a slave. So Yusuf came and started searching all of them and the f finally he found it in the stuff of his brother. So he took it and he said, okay, this is uh, what we found. They said, oh, a Yasirak. So his brother, if he's committing a theft, his brother before he did the same. Just a lie. Yusuf alayhi salam, he doesn't want to engage. فَأَسَرَّهَا يُوسُفُ فِي نَفْسِهِ Yusuf alayhi salam kept it. وَلَمْ يُبْدِهَا لَهُمْ He didn't show them any anger. And he said, you are the worst. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you are talking. Now the brothers, uh, they found themselves, they... Uh, broke the agreement with their father. What shall they do? So they said, send someone to the father and say to him, this is what happened. So the father, he was sad and he was crying. And uh, then they said to him, look, Yani, you are destroying yourself. He said to them, go and try to find Yusuf and his brother. So they went. This is the third meeting. And in the third meeting, Yusuf السلام, said to them, I am your brother. And then they sent someone to <coughs> bring the father and uh, the other brothers. And there, uh, the, exp the interpretation of the dream became true now. And all of them prostrated uh, to Yusuf, the father, the mother, uh, their mother, which is step, uh, stepmother for Yusuf. And uh, all of them prostrated. And that was the interpretation of, of the dream.
and we'll find this in this ayah قال يا أبتي هذا تأويل رؤياي قد جعلها ربي حقا and in ayah 100 so the dream was in ayah 4 the interpretation was in ayah 100 he said to his father this is the interpretation then he made this beautiful dua ربي قد آتيتني من الملك وعلمتني من تأويل الأحاديث فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت وليي في الدنيا والآخرة توفني مسلما وألحقني بالصالحين My Lord you have indeed bestowed on me of the sovereignty and taught me something of the interpretation of dreams The only creator of the heavens and the earth You are my wali, protector, helper, <coughs> supporter, guardian in this world and in the hereafter Cause me to die as a Muslim, uh, the one submitting to your will, and join me with the, with the righteous. This was the end of the story of Yusuf. The other ayahs after that, 10 ayahs, just a reminder about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the lessons that we can learn from, uh, from the stories. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all of us will benefit from uh, the Holy Quran. Jazakumullah khairan for listening brothers and sisters and watching. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep all of you in the best iman and health. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.